One of the best things you could do to get to the next level as a developer is to write tests. Now, there are a bunch of different types of tests you can write. Regardless of the type, the primary goal of testing is to give you the confidence that your code is working and will continue to work as you add features and make changes throughout your code base over time. As projects grow larger and larger, there is more surface area to account for. So tests become this sort of saving grace. And the main idea behind them is feedback. Tests act as this form of feedback to prevent regressions by letting us know when we've broken something in a separate part of our code base. They ensure that we really understand the requirements before we write any code. And they even act as something of a design tool, helping us sniff out bad design. Generally speaking, if a test is hard to write, there's a good chance that it means the design needs work. So if tests are so good, why aren't we doing this more often? Well, testing can be pretty challenging to grasp. Two of the main areas of complexity with testing comes from understanding what to test and understanding how to test it. This is especially true when we're dealing with code that has dependencies ranging from front-end libraries and APIs to external services, databases, and caches, and other infrastructural concerns. Testing is a part of architecture. Architecture is about those expensive, hard-to-change things like choosing a text stack or choosing an architectural style or choosing a testing approach in, in our case here. The trouble with not thinking about this early on is that if we don't think about how we're going to automate the process of knowing what we've written is correct, then we're leaving a lot of room for uncertainty down the road. And the worst case to be in is deep in our project and realizing that none of it is testable. It's about as bad as a situation to be in as starting a project, working on it for weeks, coming up to the final sprint, and then trying to figure out how to deploy it to production right before the deadline. This is bad because there's just way too much uncertainty here. So again, as developers, we should value feedback, exposing bad design and uncertainty as early as possible. Hopefully at this point, you're sold on the idea that we want tests. And we know that writing tests much later, especially when everything is done and developed, can be pretty challenging or borderline impossible to do. So let's talk about TDD. TDD, or test-driven development, is a technique or a process for developing software. The idea is we write a failing test, we write the simplest possible solution, then we look at our design and we make refactorings. We call this process the red-green refactor loop, and it helps keep the feedback loops really tight. TDD is one of the original agile technical practices from extreme programming, which is a development methodology from the 90s that influenced much of what it means to be agile today. Now, before I demonstrate the TDD flow, I just want to say one last thing in this introduction, and that's that TDD is a process. TDD doesn't mean just writing unit tests. There are other types of tests as well. There's integration tests or acceptance tests. Essentially, these are the tests that we write when we convert the user stories or functional requirements from the customer into sometimes also called functional tests. And given these different types of tests, we could, and we should, if we value feedback, use TDD to write these types of tests as well. Double loop TDD means you work with two TDD loops, the outer acceptance test loop and the inner unit test loop. One of the loops catches regressions and the other loop measures progress towards implementing a feature. And if this sounds like a lot, it is, but thanks for <laughs> sticking in there. But we're just getting started with TDD, so we should start with the baby steps. Let's move this video over to a demonstration. What we're gonna do here is create a simple palindrome checker. So what I've got here is my simple TypeScript starter that I've downloaded from my GitHub, and I've got a basic test up here. I'm gonna go ahead and just remove all of this, and let's take a look at the README real quick. So the palindrome checker has a couple of requirements. It should also be able to tell that something's a palindrome even if the casing is off. So that means that mom with an uppercase M is still a palindrome. And it should also be able to detect when phrases are palindromes as well, phrases that contain spaces. So I'm gonna start up our tests with a script, npm run test dev. And the one test we have here is running. Now that's not what we wanna test, so let's go ahead and get rid of this. And let's write the first test. So red is the first step, so let's create a failing test.
and that's failing so we're in red so what we need to do is now go ahead and create this Okay, so now we're in green. And at this moment, there's not much to refactor, so we'll go ahead and grab the next test. So the next test we'll test against is if mom is a palindrome. This is failing because of a compilation error, so we're still in red. And now this is also still failing because of a compilation error because this palindrome doesn't exist, so we'll go ahead and create that. and we'll return the simplest possible thing that could work, say true. And the test is passing. That's great, now let's go ahead and add another test. It should be able to tell that Bill isn't a palindrome. So we're currently in red right now, and the reason why this is failing is because Bill isn't a palindrome, and if we look here, we're just returning true. So now we're actually being forced to write a little bit of logic. Can go ahead and make this work. And we're in the green, which is good. So now we're in the refactor mode and I'm looking at our tests and I'm seeing that we're repeating this creating the palindrome checker three times here. So what I'm going to do is clean this up. save and we're good. For the next test we're going to test the casing. So now we're in the red, we have a failing test. Let's go ahead and make this green. Let's do the simplest possible thing that would work. Great, and now we're in the refactor mode. Let's take a look at the design, I think it's okay. And let's pull the next test. Let's try this phrase here, this was it a rat I saw, let's make that into a test. And 
Okay, so that's failing. Let's see how we can make it green. Again, the simplest possible thing that we could do that would make this work. And what we did there was stripped out the spaces. And now we're in the refactor mode and I think we could do a little bit of refactoring here. Personally, I like to do clean one-liners with things like this. And I think I could do another refactoring here as well. I think I could take the logic that strips the spaces. Okay, that's looking a little bit better. Let's go back to our tests and we'll try another one of those. And it looks like it works. So that's pretty much TDD, at least inside out TDD write the failing test, write the simplest possible thing that could work, look at the design, contemplate and think if you can improve it, and then take the next test. We covered quite a bit in this video. We talked about what TDD is, how it helps you write testable code, gives you feedback and helps improve your designs. We discussed a couple of the types of tests you can write, and we did a demonstration of the classic inside out TDD approach, building a palindrome checker. I think TDD is a really good tool to have as you start to learn more about software design, I think that TDD is a fundamental tool to have in your toolbox. My advice if you're just getting started with TDD is to try out more examples. Go and find some code catas. Try to master this technique. Try to get the technique down. Go and find some other code catas on the internet. There's a bunch of them. Build tic-tac-toe, you know, build an elevator, do the game of life, Tower of Hanoi. At this point, you just kind of want to get the technique down because when we get into real applications, we have to go and figure out how to mock things and deal with dependencies and it becomes a lot more interesting. If you like this kind of content, check out my blog at khalilstemler.com. I write a lot about TypeScript and domain-driven design. My goal is to teach developers how to write testable, flexible, and maintainable code. That's all for now. Thank you.